not only are we forgetting to do these exercises, but some of these exercises can actually come in real handy. Look, that's not even English. <laughs> What's up guys and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the top movements that we often forget to do. So during training we can often get a little bit tunnel vision and we can get a little bit overly dedicated to certain movements which leads to us forgetting that there's more out there for us to be doing. Not only do we forget to do these exercises sometimes but we also forget they exist for when we have a little bit of a twinge or an injury in which case a lot of these can come into play and allow you to still work a muscle group without aggravating that little twinge or tweak or tightness. So first up, chest. So sitting yourself on the normal chest press stabilized machine, you're going to turn yourself sideways and use it single arm at a time. This is gonna make you have to reduce the weight to about 25% of what you normally use. But this isn't about the weight, this is all about the technique. So being sat sideways, you want to keep your elbow nice and high, core braced, shoulders back, keeping a good solid neutral posture throughout. You're gonna drive through, pushing your arm across the body, helping to contract the chest, really squeezing at the top of the motion. On the negative, the seat should give you a nice warning as to when you need to stop and drive back up through the positive. One set is completed once you've done both sides, left and right, and make sure that you are squeezing through with the chest and not driving through with the shoulder. Deadlifts are a fantastic movement, but one that's often forgotten and neglected because we get so obsessed with deadlifting is a rack pull. This is really good for developing inner thickness in the back and also helping you with that upper portion of the deadlift. So for this, ideally you want a power rack. This can be done on a Smith machine, but if you have the free weight version, that is better. You're gonna put the safety bars to a point just below your knees so that when you grab the bar, it's as if you're halfway through a deadlift motion. So starting with the load in your feet, you're gonna drive through the hips and the heels and extend to a full upright position, squeezing the back, but but not overextending and hyperextending the back. Remember, we want to keep that spine neutral. We want to squeeze with the glutes and then really squeeze with the back at the top part of the motion. Touching the bar down every single time and then going straight back up into each other rep. But keep it controlled and don't bounce the bar. Due to the range of motion on this exercise, it can be a real power movement when you get good at it. So look to start with a moderate weight, but as you get better, making sure that you maintain technique throughout, you should be able to get some serious weight on that bar. That's really going to help you deadlift in the long run, especially for that explosive top end for a lot people tend to hinge. Taking a look at biceps, there's going to be two variations of this exercise and that is an overhand grip curl. Starting with the dumbbells, this is done single arm at a time across the body. So we're not lifting out to the front, we're lifting across. This takes a little bit of practice to get used to, but you start with the dumbbells in a hammer grip by your sides and rotate them up and over as you come across the body. Make sure that you're keeping your scapula engaged, soft knees, braced core and glutes engaged. We want a neutral spine here and we want balance within the body, so no swinging. The other variation to this movement is to use a barbell with an overhand grip. This is gonna have a lot more stress than the negative as you go down, so you're gonna to have to really make sure that you have your feet planted nice and soft and don't allow the body to rock. Again, pulling knuckles through to the chest, squeezing at the top and then fighting that negative. This is a great overall movement for reducing any kind of twinge that you might have in your elbows, but also incorporates the forearms in a big way. So, if you want to start building those forearms, this is a great exercise to include. On to triceps, and this is some cable variations that you might not have thought to use. The first one being single arm cross bodies with no handle on the cable. You're simply gonna grip the ball on the cable itself. You're gonna stand with your shoulder retracted using the scapula. The trick here is to not let the shoulder roll forward. Pulling across the body, you're gonna extend the arm to full contraction, but you're gonna keep a slight angle on the arm. So don't be tempted to swing through with the cable, because you'll see a lot of people doing. You wanna keep that angle on the arm and squeeze down and through. This is gonna keep tension. The angle on the arm that's broken about before, that's what we need to maintain. Keep the core braced. Sometimes placing the hand that you're not using on your hip can help balance the body if you find that you're twisting. Make sure that the scapula is engaged throughout, the body's kept in balance, symmetry from side to side, single arm at a time, one set is completed once you've done both arms. I'm looking for around about 10 to 12 reps on this exercise. If you can't get to grips with that exercise, some people do struggle with it. Here's a variation that you can also use that's often forgotten about, and that is an underhand grip tricep extension using the straight bar. So setting your shoulders back and keeping your chest up, you're gonna grip the straight bar with an underhand grip. 
From there, you're gonna pull it down and set your start position. Once the start position's set, you're gonna maintain that angle on the arms. You're gonna extend fully and straighten the arms, maintaining that slight forward angle, squeeze at the bottom, and then control the negative. Little trick here is to make sure that the straight bar is going straight down and not going into the machine. If the bar's going into the machine as you extend, you just need to take a half step back. Make sure to keep the elbows tight by your side, but you should also find if you struggle on the normal tricep straight bar pushdowns due to any kind of elbow aggravation, this could be one that helps relieve that, so give it a go. Next up is shoulders, and this one you're literally gonna be steering your way towards gains. So this is a three-part movement using a 15 kilogram or 20 kilogram plate. What you're gonna do is you're going to grip the plate on either side from the waist. You're going to do a front raise, lifting the plate out in front. From there, you're gonna rotate the left hand over the right, and then bring the right hand back over the left before returning the plate back down to the waist. And then again, front lift and back up and repeat. This is a three-part exercise and it can be tough to get going. What you have to avoid is swinging on the negative and also letting the plate drop as you move on. You need to keep the plate at shoulder height and you need to maintain control throughout, not letting the body rock left or right. So make sure that your core's brace, glutes engaged, soft knees, feet hip width apart and scapula engaged. This is a great functional exercise and you're gonna really feel this burn on the front head of the delt. But what it's also gonna do is it's gonna challenge the core. So make sure that you do keep that core braced, keep it controlled, keep a neutral spine and don't don't allow the neck or traps to tense up. Try and stay relaxed at the neck, relaxed at the traps, and let the shoulders do the work. Last but not least, we're gonna take a look at some goblet squats. These are a great variation from doing a front squat, and often when the gym's nice and busy, this can be a way of not having to wait around for the squat rack. Taking a dumbbell, you're gonna lift this and hold it in front of your chest using almost an underhand grip. So you're gonna keep the palms under the top head of the dumbbell. From there, you're gonna set your stance as you would for a normal squat. Take a deep breath in at the top, brace your core, keeping the spine neutral. You're then gonna squat down, letting your knees track out ever so slightly before firing back up through the hips and heels and squeezing the glutes to the top and exhaling. This is a great movement to get you back into the squatting motion if you've had some time away or just something that you can use as a variation if you're feeling any stress on the knees or maybe the lower back and areas like that but still want to get that leg movement in. Goblet squats are tough but also quite a light exercise. So there you have it, a ton of movements you might have forgotten about or never even heard of, but now you can go and take them and use them. Let me know what you think. Comment below with anything else that you would like to see as per usual. Make sure to hit that notification bell. I know it's a pain in the ass for me to keep asking these things, but there is an issue with the channel at the moment where you guys are not being notified of uploads, but if you hit that bell, it guarantees that you'll know once I've uploaded and you don't miss out on any of the information that I'm gonna be putting forward. A lot more videos like this coming your way. Give me some ideas in the comment section below for anything you'd like to see. I always read them all. If you see a question or a comment there that you know the answer to, make sure to help each other out. So until the next video, hope you've enjoyed this one. I'm Lex, we are out. I gotta live this life till you die.